Hey everyone, Steve Harris here with OutCode. I thought I would do a fun video today, giving you a sneak peek into some of the unreleased improvements that are coming to the website builder and platform. We'll do a deeper dive into these items once they're fully tested and available. But for now, let's just take a quick look and get excited about where things are headed. The first improvement I'd like to show you today involves responsive design. Now you've probably seen within the design tab and site layout option, you can now change your desktop and tablet views to be responsive, but that's just the beginning. There's an entirely new responsive system being added to the website builder. It's called Flex. Flex uses Flexbox and CSS Grid as underlying technologies and allows you to build fluid layouts right within the website builder. Let me show you how it works. I'll close out of this tab and on my site here, I'm going to add a new section. Let's click plus. And within, I have a section category called Flex Sections. And as you can see, the top one is just an empty grid. And below, we've got some pre-made examples. So let's just go ahead and add this Flex section in. Click Save, and I'll close this tab. So we get a welcome message saying, Welcome to Flex Mode. And as you can see, the Website Builder looks completely different. So a quick tour of what we've got going on here. On the left side, we have a layers panel. The layers panel allows us to select specific items within the layout. In the center, we have our canvas where we can interact with elements and add new elements to the site. We also have the option to switch between different layouts. So I can go tablet, mobile, and all these are doing is simulating different breakpoints throughout the site. And we also have a primary main desktop breakpoint. And you could consider this a master breakpoint. Changes made to this breakpoint override other breakpoints. And on the right side, we have a new grid system and some positioning and animation options for it. Now, one of the most exciting aspects of this is it's introducing freeform design to the builder. So you can see here, I have an image. If I click on the image, I can actually drag this image around and place it wherever I want. And what we have underlying this image is this grid system. And if I actually preview this and shrink my browser, you can see that the grid is indeed shuffling down. So this is a fully responsive or fluid layout. Now keep in mind, it's just this section on the site. So the navigation and other elements are not fluid yet, but you can decide when you want to rebuild sections of your site to take advantage of this new responsive system. Let's go back to the editor. On the right side here, I have some arrange options. So this is where items are going to sit within my grid and we want to align them, say, to the top, to the middle, and that will determine where their positioning is as the browser scales up and down. We can also add some sizing options where we can set percentage widths. We can turn on keep proportions, which allows images to scale down and retain their original proportion so that images don't get cut off or cropped. We have animation options for setting triggers for the animation. So on scroll or on entrance and which animation we'd like to show. We have more positioning options for setting percentage based padding and margins on the site. And lastly, we have additional design and aesthetic options for adding borders, rounding corners, adding shadows, that sort of thing. So you know that we'll be providing extensive training on this new system and keep in mind, it's something that you can integrate as needed and build specific sections to be responsive. You don't have to create the entire site this way. This new responsive system is currently in beta and we're looking to turn it on for our pro and enterprise users soon. However, keep in mind, because it is an early iteration, we do not recommend yet using it for production sites as things may still change. We'll send out more details about enabling Flex within your account soon. The next feature I'd like to introduce is the new App Store. You'll see here on the left side, I now have a new option called My Apps. When I click that option, we have an entirely new store within the builder where we can add third-party apps that achieve specific functionality. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this is just a demo and all of these apps will not be immediately available within your builder. However, we are looking to roll them out very soon and we're going to start with a couple of our favorite. For example, Audio Eye, which is an accessibility solution that allows you to better comply with content accessibility guidelines. 
Another app we're very excited about is Site Search 360. This allows you to leverage a better search system for your site without as much manual setup work as some of the other search options out there. Now, the way that the new App Store will work is you will turn on the App Store from your Without Code dashboard. And from there, you can purchase which app you'd like to enable on the site. Keeping in mind, these are third-party services, most of which have higher level paid plans if you need extensive functionality. Some of them do offer free options or trial options, but if you need something that does some very heavy lifting, there's usually a monthly or annual fee associated with it. However, the fee that you'll see through our app store is typically lower than what you would find going directly to the provider. These are just some of the early options that are being looked at and partnerships that are being worked out, but we're hoping to see this grow exponentially over the coming months and years. We're in the final stages of development on the App Store, and we're looking to launch with a couple of our favorite apps, two or three to begin with, in early summer 2021. The third feature I'd like to demo is our brand new Media Drive. Now, Media Drive has been in testing for quite a while, and it was a big project for us to pull off, but I want to clarify some details around it. So Media Drive should not be compared to something like Dropbox. It's not for long-term file storage. This is built for fast file and media delivery. So the service it's built on is designed to serve up files to users around the world in the fastest possible way. It's powered by the Google Cloud. And some of the benefits of Media Drive are it allows you to upload different file types that we don't necessarily allow you to upload within the builder itself. Those files are completely uncompressed. So if you decide to upload a video to your Media Drive folder, we will not do any compression or optimization on it. For designers who are photographers or who are very particular about their file compression and quality, we see this as a massive benefit. Another aspect to Media Drive that's incredibly powerful is its ability to be hooked up to widgets within the builder through one simple integration system. And let me show you quickly what that is. If I jump over to my Without Code account, I'm here in Media Drive, and it looks pretty simple when I land, but what I have here is a folder called Video Gallery, and I've uploaded videos to it. Now, instead of manually linking these videos up to any sort of gallery, we have this option here to either copy the folder link or we can click this info and turn on Media Stream. And what Media Stream will do is give us, it's called a JSON link, but basically this is a single link that will pull in all files within the gallery. So what we can do with that then is hook it up to a gallery. For example, the gallery we've released already can be filtered, it can combine videos and images, and those videos and images are uncompressed and are available for you to simply update the folder and the gallery will instantly update with everything you've included. It's a pretty extraordinary system. And as you can see here, we have a YouTube video. If I scroll to the next, we have a static image. We have thumbnails on the bottom. We have controls on the top. This is a very, very powerful gallery system and it's all powered by our media drive. Another exciting widget that we've released for Media Drive is the video scroll motion. And this is where it's important that we didn't compress videos because this feature, which you see on sites like Apple, where as I scroll down, the video in the background actually plays, requires videos to be set up a certain way and they cannot be compressed and optimized or this feature just does not work. So we needed to give you a place where you could keep the kind of purity of those videos intact. And as you can see, this is a very, very cool feature only made possible by our new Media Drive system. And again, Media Drive is designed to give you direct links to files, not put an interface in front of it. If you link to a Dropbox file, you're going to land on the Dropbox interface and you're going to see Dropbox controls and that sort of thing. A Media Drive file is a direct link. We do not put an interface on it and you can do with it what you wish. So we'll continue to build on our Media Drive system. And as you can see here within your account, you can upgrade your Media Drive storage to one gigabyte. And we currently have that price at $59 a year. I'm so excited to see what our customers can do with Media Drive. And we can take this service in so many different directions. The possibilities are truly endless. The fourth item I'd like to talk about is a somewhat renewed emphasis on the aesthetic and visually stunning widgets. Now, we used to spend a lot of time just integrating really cool functionality and visual features, especially in our Muse themes business. But as we built out the Without Code platform, we needed to get some of the basics in place first, you know, simple sliders and tables and that sort of thing. 
Now we feel we've reached a level of maturity where we can go after some of these cooler effects, things that you may not use on every single site, but when you do, they're very, very impressive and customers feel like they have something very unique. So we just released this widget on our Muse Themes business. It's called Row Scroll Gallery. And as I scroll down the page, you can see that these gallery items actually transition in a really kind of interesting effect. And I can click on an item to open it up in a light box. So there's nothing like this in the builder currently, and you may not use it for every site, but I just wanted to show you that we are listening to your feedback and we certainly look forward to integrating some of these really unique effects into the builder in the coming months and years. In addition to those visual effects, we also have plans to tackle some big ticket items like business directory systems and widgets, IDX feeds. We also have a plan to integrate an activity log into the dashboard where you can actually monitor what your CMS users are doing on the site in terms of publishing and resetting and that sort of thing. So you can keep an eye on your customer's activity there. So plenty of stuff being developed right now and it's going to be a big year ahead for releases. The final item I'd like to talk about very quickly is something called Google's Core Web Vitals. Now, Google has announced that they will start including the Core Web Vitals as a key ranking factor in your site's search results. Basically, Core Web Vitals are a set of specific factors that Google considers very important in a web page's overall user experience. And these can be things like how long does the page content take to load and how mobile friendly the site is and that sort of thing. We've always said that the best way to improve your search rankings are to make the site more enjoyable for your users to visit and improve the content so they spend more time consuming it on your site. And they're not going to do that if the site is poorly built or it's slow and you're going to see a drop in rankings. The reason I'm talking about this is because behind the scenes for many months now, the platform itself has been upgraded to address many of these core web vitals. You don't have to do anything to now take advantage of it. Simply republish your website and over the coming months, as things improve, you'll be measuring up to Google's new system. Whereas if you built a site on something like WordPress or a different platform that was not staying on top of this, you could actually see a ranking drop. So that's just one of the many benefits of building and publishing your site on without code. And we're certainly trying to do the legwork behind the scenes for you so that you can just tell your customers, their site's been instantly updated to address these new Core Web Vitals from Google, and you're done. So go ahead and read about Core Web Vitals and when it's coming. Google has announced that it's coming in the next few months here, and we look forward to sharing more info about how sites on the Without Code Network are indeed taking advantage of these new factors. So that's it for a quick sneak peek, maybe a longer video than I expected, but I'm really excited about these features and I wanted to show you everything that's coming. And as always, be sure to visit the updates and releases page on our site to see all of the new things that are coming out. We don't necessarily send out emails for every little change, but we always update this log for you and we are releasing new items constantly. Thank you so much for being a Without Code customer and I can't wait to see what you do with these new features as they're integrated into the builder over the coming months.